This is your High Desert Sports Report, the Victor Valley's only weekly action highlights sports program, covering our area's schools, teams, athletes, and sporting events. Jackrabbits center fielder Mikey Prieto and Bulldogs catcher Kean Costigan are first team All-CIF Division IV heading up High Desert standouts named All-CIF. Mikey Prieto, a junior, led the Jackrabbits to second place in the DSL and deep into the playoffs. Mikey Prieto offers a key to his success and the best advice he ever received. As if confidence is the key. If you believe in yourself, you will succeed. So that's what I, that's what I go by. The best, the best advice I received was from my father. Okay, and he told me to be the same person when I'm falling and the same person when I'm rising. And I could break that up to two things, uh, including baseball, being the same person on the field when you're 0 for 4 and 4 for 4, uh, having the same confidence and um, attitude every day on the field. Are you enjoying this interview? Yes. <laughs> yeah, having fun talking to you. Kian Costigan helped lead Oak Hills to their third consecutive Mojave River League title and into the CIF quarterfinals. The senior catcher hit 471 with 30 RBIs and was an impact player behind the plate as well as at the plate. Also named 2018 All-CIF Baseball Selections, Desert Sky League Player of the Year, Jonathan Carlos, and six-game winner, Antonio Almos, of the DSL champion, Silverado Hawks, All-CIF Division VI. Apple Valley Christian catcher Aiden Delgado is a Division VI All-CIF repeat selection. ACE's Chase Mitchell and University Prep's Rudy Mejia also repeat selections CIF Division 7. Down Home Grill, Victorville, online sports report. Action highlights brought to you by the Down Home Grill. Burgers from organic grass-fed beef, breakfast from organic eggs, great food, homemade, GMO, and many gluten-free. Down Home Grill, corner of Bear Valley Road and Ridgecrest Drive, Victorville. One is pitching in the Miami Marlins organization. Two are on their way to USC. Another is an Arizona State commit competing for a spot on the USA Under-18 team. A truly outstanding array of talent named to the Daily Press All-Area Baseball Team. R.J. Peace of Serrano led the Diamondbacks to the CIF Championship, finishing his senior season with a point. 2-4 ERA with 97 strikeouts in 87 and one-third innings. Peace did not allow an earned run in 22 and one-third innings in the playoffs, covering three starts and one relief appearance. At the plate, R.J. Peace was Coach Joe Knowlton's leadoff hitter, batting 352 with a 482 on base percentage and a 477 slugging percentage. Peace led the Diamondbacks in runs scored and stolen bases. The 6'2", 180-pound Peace was drafted by the Miami Marlins five days after pitching his team to the CIF title. He was a 13th round selection. Peace now pitches for the Gulf Coast League Marlins where he has established a 2-1 and record and a .84 ERA. Peace has 13 strikeouts in 21 innings of work. Solomon Bates of Oak Hills posted a 192 earned run average for the Bulldogs. The 6-2 Bates struck out 96 batters in 58 and one-third innings while issuing 31 walks. Bates led the Bulldogs in hitting with a 381 average and eight home runs, 30 runs driven in, and 13 stolen bases. Solomon Bates withdrew from the Major League Draft and will attend the University of Southern Cal on a baseball scholarship. Saxon Andros is a first-team All-CIF selection for the Diamondbacks as a junior. The 5'11 Andros won nine games for Serrano, four of those complete game victories, compiling a 1.51 earned run average while striking out 95 in 69 and two-thirds innings. 
Andros held opposing hitters to a 204 batting average. Southpaw Miles Sandham of Granite Hills is another junior, another nine game winner, and another first team all CIF selection. The 6'3", 220 pound Sandham rang up 101 strikeouts in 75 innings, issuing only 18 walks. Sandham also led Coach Tyler Skurlock's Cougars in home runs with five and RBIs with 26. The second member of the Daily Press All-Area Team bound for USC is catcher Caleb Murphy out of Excelsior. The CIF Division 7 Player of the Year, Murphy led the Eagles to the CIF Championship. His 6.45 batting average was fourth highest in the state, and Murphy was named to the Max Prep Small Schools All-State Team. The 6'1", 215-pound Murphy combines power with speed, 10 home runs, and 43 stolen bases in 44 attempts. The Daily Press All-Area Utility Player is catcher by trade Alex Spadafora of Serrano. Spadafora threw out 9 of 11 attempted base stealers, allowed two passed balls the entire season, and committed but one error. The 5'8", 155-pound senior, Spadafora hit 384 and led the Diamondbacks with 21 runs driven in. On an upcoming edition of your KVVB-TV Channel 33 Sports Watch, we shall detail the remaining position players. That honor roll includes three Victor Valley Jackrabbits and two more Cougars from Granite Hills. The 2018 High Desert Yardbirds have one local player on their roster, former Oak Hills High School and Victor Valley College Rams pitcher Adolfo Espinoza. Adolfo Espinoza won his first three starts, becoming the first Yardbirds pitcher to win three games. Four starts into the season, Adolfo Espinoza had the lowest earned run average in the Pacific Division. My strength, I would say, is not from a certain pitch that I would throw. I think it's more on the mental side, so when you get into a struggle, you kind of got to buckle down at that point, and you, you've got to either commit and do what you got to do or they're going to score runs and obviously I don't want them to score runs so got to got to buckle down mentally get tougher and go by the game minimize big innings. Adolfo likes to throw a lot of sliders and cutters um, he he's not one of those guys that's going to just overpower everybody um, like a Kevin would but he throws a lot of strikes um, he hits his spots really well and he's got some great off speed pitches uh, his change up has been developing. Uh, it's gotten significantly better even since he's been out here. Uh, his curveball uh, does a, a pretty good job as well. Um, his fastball is, is not um, a bad pitch to say the least. It's a very effective pitch, but when you throw that with his cutter, um, it, it becomes even more lethal. I love how his coaching is going so far. Um, so I can't wait to, he's making me better every day. He already taught me a new pitch that I've been throwing during the game. So. Um, it's, it's exciting to be behind a coach that I, that's a mentor. He coaches us, he, he's able to teach us all the techniques. He's helped me personally in my pitching since he went to San Diego State, pitched there, you know. He's a great pitcher. He got it up in the 90s and he's not a big guy. He has great technique for, for us bigger guys of how to get better with with everything that goes. Adolfo Espinosa was an all-conference pitcher at Victor Valley College after his highly heralded career at Oak Hills High School. In his first Yardbird home field start, the 6'2", 170-pound Adolfo Espinosa also contributes at the plate, driving in runs in his first two plate appearances. Adolfo Espinosa hit over 400 at Oak Hills, leading the 2011 Bulldogs to a 25-3 record in the season's first CIF championship. Adolfo Espinosa went 11-1 on the mound his senior season with a 223 ERA, was named Mojave River League Most Valuable Player, CIF Division 5 Player of the Year, and All-State. 
Adolfo, any advice for the young player that wants to be where you are someday? I would definitely suggest to just enjoy the game and go out there and have fun. Definitely for all the parents too, go out there, uh, support support your, your kid and let them have fun doing it while they're growing up. Uh, when you get older, more towards uh, high school, I would suggest to keep going. Wherever they want to do, keep playing. Uh, don't give up and keep working hard for their dream and to keep playing. Hey, where, where can these youngsters find a place to work out with top-rate equipment these days? Uh, they could definitely go to High Desert Sports Training. Uh, that's my, my job. My, I work there. We, they offer pitching lessons, uh, bat, indoor batting cages, and anything, anything that you need, I know they could help with. So HD Sports Training in Hesperia, California. High Desert Sports Training, online sports report. High Desert Sports Training, the area's only high-performance TreadX 3030 treadmill and hip machine. Indoor batting cages, High Desert Sports Training, personal instructors and coaches unparalleled in experience and effectiveness. High Desert Sports Training utilizes muscle memory and speed of contraction, developing a quicker, faster, and stronger athlete call to schedule a free evaluation. High Desert Sports Training. Your High Desert Sports Report is brought to you by Down Home Grill in Victorville on the corner of Bear Valley Road and Ridgecrest Drive. The world-class auctioneers at I-15 Auctions. Bid fast, bid last. I-15 Auctions. Midway Home Solutions in Victorville, providing highest quality home appliances at discount prices for six decades. And Iwan Zak Law Firm, trial lawyers for serious problems. And by the Community Table Restaurant in the Holiday Inn in Victorville, supporting high desert teams, athletes, and sports programs. This Yardbirds homestand invites the latest challenger to High Desert's perch atop the Pecos League Pacific Division. The Bakersfield Train Robbers have heisted second place from California City and intend to steal the Yardbirds home field advantage and take over first. The homestand begins with High Desert's first and only Atalanto Stadium doubleheader of the 2018 crop of home games, kicking off an 11 game homestand. Kyle Chavez is poised to make his sixth start in one of the Twinville confrontations with the train robbers. 26-year-old Kyle Chavez leads the Yardbirds in innings pitched. So yeah, I am um, from St. Petersburg, Florida. Um, end up finishing my career in uh, college at Talladega, Alabama at NAI school. Had a great senior year, ended up being AII Pitcher of the Year. Um, Played in the Empire League, did, was there for about three weeks, had some good numbers, ended up getting called into the American Association of the Gary South Shore Railcats, uh, had, a, had a good time, a good stint there. Um, ended up getting released at the very end of the season, um, then was doing a lot of frontier stuff, uh, got released in the spring training this year and found a home with the Yardbirds and trying to get back into the big four again, you know. Yeah, Chavez is a different animal altogether. Um, he has a lot of movement and he throws from down low. So, uh, you know, right away you're going to have a lot of drop and rise to the ball. But what makes him uh, especially hard to hit and, and sometimes even hard to catch um, is that his fastball will sometimes do, do two different things. Sometimes it will sink and sometimes it will cut. And that's extremely hard for a hitter to hit. Um, and so when he's... Uh, yeah. Um, you, it's, it's more challenging to hit, that's for sure. And then when you throw in his... Uh, his cutter and his change up and he sometimes comes over the top with the fastball uh, it's just it's a, a combination that he's gonna get a lot of guys out especially when he's feeling good that day uh, uh, when things are going right uh, good location a lot of weak contact uh, a lot of ground balls sinkers sliders keeping hitters off balance um, it's tr really trying to attack the zone early and keep the pitch count down to try to cruise my way through at least six seven innings Has Shane Brown ever had a nickname? <laughs> I, you know, I just had a couple like Shaner or Brownie, and then I've heard this year coming from the stands, Downtown Brown. <laughs> That's a good one. Uh, Harm, what nicknames have you had? Uh, <laughs> since I've been here, I don't have the Harmonizer, B, 
Big B. I don't heard a lot of stuff from the fans. I, I had a lot of nicknames. Uh, Cookie, AC. Uh, oh, man, they used to call me Mowgli back in the day uh, from the Jungle Book. So that was one of my favorite ones. But uh, When I was born, my aunt, my dad's sister, she looked at me and she just called me Miser. M-E-E-Z-E-R. Miser. So my family's nickname for me is Miser. Or sometimes they say Mies or Mies Man. Avery. What's my nickname? Nasty Nort? Nort Nortorious. <laughs> because Nort, they call me Nortorious because that's my that's my, my social media name. Okay. Any of your teammates have nicknames that we don't know about? I mean, yeah. I want to call you Magic and I don't know. Magic. All right. All right. I, well, like that. I, like, okay. I like that. I like that. I'll I'll take that. The Yardbirds take whatever magic they may summon to arrest the train robbers' efforts to eject them from their perch atop the Pacific Division. Video Sports summons all fans on deck to egg on High Desert's defense of their Pecos League title. This is what a stopper looks like. A stopper is a team's pitcher who can put a stop to a losing streak and get the team back on track with a victory. Adolfo Espinosa fulfills that role to perfection this night, beating Monterey in a game that snaps the Yardbirds' longest losing skid in franchise history. Adolfo Espinosa withstands bothersome soreness in his pitching arm to pitch five full innings and earn his fourth win of the season without a loss. The former Oak Hills All-CIF pitcher of 2011, who turned 25 nine days prior to this start, strikes out five, including striking out the side of Amber Jacks in the second. How important was it to get this team back in the win column? It's good. It's a good. We needed that team win. We've been uh, kind of struggling a little bit. Thank you. Um, we just got to keep attacking. It's one game, but it's a long season, so we just got to take it one game at a time and uh, keep, keep attacking these guys like we could play. Good job tonight. Keep it going. Thank you. Thank you. Eric Schneider's drive to the center field wall sends Kieran Whitfield home with High Desert's second run in the three-run first. The Yardbirds stake Adolfo Espinosa to all the runs he will need for the win early. Ronnie Grant energizes the offense with the base hit to right center field. High Desert's leading hitter hustles to second, turning the base hit into his 12th double of the year. Eric Schneider follows with his second straight clutch run producing at bat. The drive bouncing to the Thompson Family Plumbing sign in center field sends Ronnie Grant across with high desert run number four. Second RBI on the night for Eric Schneider with the run scoring triple. Adolfo Espinosa's night involved a continuing problem with soreness in his arm. Adolfo Espinosa comes out to start the sixth, but does not throw a pitch. Jeremy Barth is summoned from the bullpen, and the 23-year-old responds with his best performance to date. Jeremy Barth keeps Monterey off the scoreboard, recording one strikeout and aiding his own cause when he squelches a seventh-inning, bases-loaded rally, the potential tying run at the plate. The broken bat, one, two, three, Jeremy Barth to catcher Jake Marshall to first baseman Eric Schneider, double play, brings the Yardbirds in, still leading five to one. Yeah, big game. There's always pressure, but you got to kind of like the pressure, and it's fun to get back on the winning side of things. So um, all my other teammates were, were killing it, and, you know, we, we did our job. So we, we didn't feel the pressure. We're all coming together as a group. So, you know, we, we, we love the feeling to get back on track again. So it felt good. The Jaybird, Yardbird. Jalen Bird registers one scoreless inning, the setup man for closer Avery Brandon, who will come on in the ninth. Avery Brandon and the Yardbirds benefit from overly aggressive base running by Amberjack Trevor Westmoreland, who falls victim to right fielder Ronnie Grant's on the mark throw to third baseman Bradley Harmon, shortstop Aaron Cook applying the tag. It will be Aaron Cook handling the game ending pop up and the High Desert Yardbirds have put an end to an eight game losing streak in this game four of the 11 game homestand. 
High Desert improves to 19 and 15. Monterey falls to 10 and 24. The final, Yardbird 6, Monterey Amberjacks 2. Midway Home Solutions Action Highlights. This video sports online report presented by Midway Home Solutions. Cool solutions to beating the heat. Huge selection of scratch and dent, air conditioners, refrigerators, freezers at closeout prices. Midway Home Solutions. Everything went right tonight for me. John Alonso sweeps to the top of the podium in this championship round five night of wheel to wheel racing, winning the Pro 500 main for the first checkered flag this season. I won the first two heats, and I thought this is my night. John aided, uh, something happened to his car, yeah. it paved the way. Bobby got loose, I got underneath him, we duked it out at the end, bumped into him a little bit, but uh, I didn't know he was there. But uh, anyhow, I was determined to win. So happy for you, John. Thank Congratulations. You. I'm happy. The 56 year old veteran races out of Orange. He has been racing wheel to wheel for 12 seasons. John Alonso was 2006 track champion. The racing chimney sweeps triumph puts him in hot pursuit of the 2018 track championship. John Alonso is atop the season points total with 32 six ahead of second place Bobby Taylor. Intermediates are the youngest or lesser experienced wheel-to-wheel -wheel drivers. Stevie Simpson first checkered in the intermediate main. Stevie Simpson is eight years old. Ten-year-old brother Ricky, red 29, finishes second in the main. Ricky Simpson and Braden Struder, blue 10, are tied for second in season points with 20. Jaden Manchester in blue 23 remains the season points leader among intermediates. 22 points for the eight-year-old who has been racing wheel to wheel since he was five. In the intermediates main event, the Simpsons battle for the checkered. Eight-year-old Stevie Simpson in blue 28 won the previous main event. Older brother Ricky Simpson, red 29, overtakes Stevie in lap two and wins the sibling rivalry to take the checker. Ricky emphasizes his reversal of fortune by taking the victory lap in reverse direction. Jaden Manchester finishes third. The outcome places Ricky Simpson and Jaden Manchester in a dead heat atop the season points total, both with 28 points. Braden Struder is in third with 24. Justin Taylor, 33, wins the restrictor main and pulls even in season points with Trent Johnson, both with 32 points, heading into the 4th of July Firecracker Spectacular. Cole Brown wins the Dirt Carts Junior main. Cash Culp finishes third and remains atop the season leaderboard with 37 points. Six ahead of second place, Lydia Brown, 16. Senior Dirt Cart, Ryan Bond and Jeff Blaylock shoulder to shoulder in front of the grandstand. Then neck and neck heading into the home stretch before Ryan Bond overtakes Jeff Blaylock and takes the checker. Ryan Bond's win moves him into second place in season points with 31, but one point behind front runner Jeffro Blaylock. Son Daisy Blaylock is in third with 22 season points. Racing begins one hour earlier on the 4th of July Firecracker Derby starting at 5. Three Apple Valley High School fabrication and welding students compete in Kentucky in the National Skills USA welding finals. I'm Bryce Avance, and this is the Skills USA co fabrication contest. First, uh, my name is Ryan Mindel. Uh, and how do you spell your last name, Ryan? M-E-I-N-D-L. Ryan, what uh, what's your role on this team? Uh, I'm the captain, or and then the uh, stick welder or arc welding. What's your name? Uh, Jaden Roop. How do you spell your last name? Is uh, it J-A-Y-D-E-N? Yes, sir. And last name, how do you spell it? R-O-U-P-E. Okay. I'm uh, oxy welding, um, or MIG welding, and some flux core welding. Uh, so kind of an all-around everything I do. Yeah. I'm the TIG welder. What, what is it? The TIG welder. What, what is a TIG welder? It's a different process of welding. The consumable electrode melts the metal and you dip a filler rod into it 
to make the weld and to fuse the two pieces of metal together. Uh, MIG welding, so you have a, a gun with the trigger and it's the wires fed through the gun, the copper wire. Um, and then I do flux core welding, it's the same thing as stick welding, just same thing as MIG, just with a flux coating on the outside of that wire. It's uh, GMA, G-M-A-W, and it's a type of process that we use, uh, which we have a stinger and an electrode that has a continuous burn. We're high school fabrication, so we, uh, they give us a design set plans of what they want us to build for, for nationals. Usually they give us material, but we want to build. This one they give us what we need to build, what materials we're using, and how we're going to build it, and how much time, which is six and a half hours. So with the teamwork process, we all have to take our own like the chunk, of the carry our own weight, you know, if it makes sense. Where one person's cutting, one person's welding, one person's grinding, or sanding. Uh, we got to make it work and flow like a river. You know, you can't have any obstructions. Uh, and with these practices, it helps build as a team and prepares us for our competition in Kentucky. So this is a rocket stove. Uh, so what it technically what it does is right here you have your wood feeder and it feeds it down into here in the bottom here and it creates your, uh, your smoke or flame or whatever you want to use and then it builds up into here, you put your meat on top and you barbecue up here. This latch folds open here. Um, then you have a little slide here where the ash falls out, clean it all out, push it back in and on the back you have, uh, you can do it called a potato, uh, potato warmer. Uh, you feed your potatoes with aluminum foil and slide them in here at the top and then take them out at the bottom, that way they're warm, nice. We are practicing, so we build two of them, here's one, and we're building in the middle of building another one. And when we get there to Kentucky, we have to build a whole another one in six and a half hours. Uh, it's more mentally uh, challenging knowing the time, uh, working with all these materials and hoping to get everything cut right and under the time constraint. Uh, but with these practices, it helps a lot to build that confidence up and prepare us for this weekend. Right, so what's the toughest part of it? Is it the time pressure or just the, it, the, the craftsmanship? Almost, almost everything. We have to cut everything and make sure everything fits nice and we run into problems and we run into things that work well. It, it's real challenging uh, with if there's hiccups you're going to have to fix those hiccups. There's, that takes time. And we don't have much time, of course. Uh, so everything has to f process just right and cut just right and everything. What classes have you taken at Apple Valley High School in welding and fabrication? Uh, so uh, actually a lot of uh, physics. Physics helped me out a lot with this. And then I've been a welding student for four years, so we took the, the SolidWorks class. We do all your computer design. Then you know you do your intermediate and go through all your welds, stick welding, TIG welding, MIG welding, uh, oxygen settling welding, um, and then you go to the advanced class and that's when you use, you know make your own project. So learning and figuring it out on yourself and having Penfold teach us and help us out kind of prepares us for everything. But learning the math between you know normal math and physics and trying to get everything put together is what really helped me. Very, very, very good. Thank you for these comments. Thank We're you. Flying out Sunday morning. Yeah. To right now rainy. Yeah, rainy, humid Kentucky. Kentucky, so uh, good luck. Look forward to hearing your Thank results. you. Down Home Grill, Victorville online report. Brought to you by the Down Home Grill. Burgers from organic grass-fed beef. Breakfast from organic eggs. Great food, homemade, GMO, and many gluten-free. Down Home Grill, Ridgecrest off Bear Valley Road, Victorville. Your High Desert Sports Report is brought to you by Down Home Grill in Victorville on the corner of Bear Valley Road and Ridgecrest Drive. The world-class auctioneers at I-15 Auctions. Bid fast, bid last, I-15 Auctions. Midway Home Solutions in Victorville, providing highest quality home appliances at discount prices for six decades. And Iwan Zak Law Firm, trial lawyers for serious problems. High Desert Sports Training, the High Desert's only high-performance TreadX 3030 treadmill and hip machine. Call to schedule a free evaluation. High Desert Sports Training. And by the Community Table Restaurant in the Holiday Inn in Victorville, supporting High Desert teams, athletes, and sports programs. This is your High Desert Sports Report, the Victor Valley's only weekly action highlights sports program. Schools, teams, athletes.
athletes and sporting events. Showing daily on the Victor Valley Television Network, victorvalleytv.com.